The thing about Mars is that it used to be cool. And by cool, I mean hot. And by hot, I mean warm. Like, 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 like check it out. Like now, Mars is a barren wasteland, right? It's, it's this frozen desert. There's no air. The air pressure is less than 1% of the air pressure that's on the Earth. The air that is there is carbon dioxide, which if you're not a plant, you are not going to enjoy breathing. It is covered in this red dust that is so ground so fine it's like talcum powder and it gets everywhere and it sticks in things and it's very annoying. The average temperatures are like below 100 degrees, whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, it doesn't matter. It's just freezing cold, right? The gravity is only a fraction of that on the earth. The amount of sunlight you get is only a fraction of that in the earth. It's just miserable. But Mars used to be better. Billions of years ago, Mars had liquid water on its surface. And if you want liquid water on the surface of a planet, you need it to be warm. You know, you need it to be like room temperature. It can't be too hot, can't be too cold. We think that in the distant past, Mars had a very thick atmosphere. This thick atmosphere was able to insulate the planet, able to keep the liquid liquid, and so there are like craters filled with water. There are, there are lakes and rivers and streams. There is, there is even like white fluffy clouds and rain, and it's it's gorgeous. Potentially home for life too, but that's that's a totally different video. But then Mars forgot how to be cool. It, I mean, and by that, I mean, it forgot how to be warm. What happened was that Mars was doomed from the start. This luscious, thick atmosphere of Mars was protected by its magnetic field. The magnetic field of a planet like Mars or like the Earth protects the atmosphere from the solar wind. The solar wind is this stream of charged particles that are constantly emanating from the sun. You can't get away from it. It's so annoying. But the magnetic field will block or deflect uh, all these charged particles. But without the magnetic field, those charged particles can just hit the molecules of the atmosphere and just zing them out into space. And once Mars lost its atmosphere, there was nothing to keep a lid on things, and so the oceans boiled, and then it dried up and died. And the reason Mars lost its magnetic field was that it was small enough that its molten core eventually solidified. The molten core in the Earth is what's responsible for generating our magnetic field, and the same thing happened on Mars until it didn't. And because Mars was so small, it cooled off, lost its magnetic field, lost its atmosphere, lost its water. So now, as we're looking ahead and wanting to visit Mars, say hi to Mars, step foot on Mars, colonize Mars. We're wondering, can we terraform Mars? Can we transform Mars to be more Earth-like? Can we, can we bring Mars back to its former glory? It was awesome three billion years ago. Can it be awesome again? So what we need to do if we want to terraform Mars is two things. We need to raise the temperatures way higher than they currently are. And we need to increase the air pressure so that we can actually walk outside without a vacuum, without a space suit or a Mars suit, you know, so we can uh, bring in more oxygen so we can breathe it. So it's just not a disaster every time you go outside. Thankfully, these two things can go hand in hand. As you increase the air pressure, you can increase the temperature. And as you increase the temperature, you can increase the air pressure. This works because of the greenhouse effect. And it turns out, by complete accident, humans are really, really, really good at warming up planets. Whoopsie, like we didn't plan that, but it turns out we, we can. All you have to do is dump a bunch of carbon in the atmosphere. If you dump a bunch of carbon in the atmosphere, it warms up the planet. The Now, with the warmer temperature, if there are any ices hanging around, those ices sublimate and become a vapor, which add to the greenhouse effect, which add to the air pressure, which add to the temperature, and then the cycle continues. So we, we've done it with the Earth. We got a lot of practice, a couple centuries worth of practice. Maybe we can do it on Mars. Now, when we look at Mars... And we look for, are there any ices available? Is there any frozen greenhouse gases, greenhouse ices, I guess you would call it, uh, that we could liberate to get this process started? And by far, the most amount of 
Greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide, which is locked up, especially in the southern polar ice cap of Mars. The southern polar ice caps of Mars is cold enough that it's, it's, there is water ice there, but there's a lot of dry ice, this uh, frozen carbon dioxide. There's also a bunch of carbon dioxide in the crust, uh, just underneath the surface and pockets here and there. So if we can get things started, if we can warm up the southern polar ice cap and get it to release the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it, we can increase the pressure, which will increase the temperature, which will accelerate more warming. And then, you know, we just have to wait a few hundred years and then Mars will be decent. There have been some proposals for actually doing this. One idea is to sprinkle a lot of dust all over the Martian solar ice cap. This reduces its reflectivity so it absorbs more heat from the sun and starts evaporating into the atmosphere. Another proposal is to build a giant mirror. Like, like seriously, like, like a, a giant space mirror. It, you know, it sounds like something from a sci-fi movie from a supervillain, but no, it's, it's a real thing. And shine it onto the sol southern polar ice cap to get it melting. And then as the planet warms, more of the carbon dioxide in the crust uh, releases, and then you just have to wait and do that wonderful greenhouse thing. I got some bad news for you. There isn't enough carbon in the polar ice cap or the crust in order to really do anything interesting. I'm sorry, we used to think there was a lot more, but now we know that there isn't all that much. If you were to release all the carbon in the polar ice caps, all the carbon in the crust, like every molecule of carbon dioxide and water vapor that you can find and release it into the atmosphere, it will increase the air pressure of Mars from around 1% of the Earth to around 2% of the Earth. And that's it. That's it. Unfortunately, Mars used to have a lot more carbon and carbon dioxide, but it lost it to space billions of years ago. It didn't get locked up in the crust where we can access it today. It's just gone. So this technique of just a straight, simple, straightforward greenhouse emissions is not going to work on Mars. We need some radical ideas. And of course, there have been some radical ideas. One idea is, you know, those chlorofluorocarbons, you know, CFCs? that, you know, they, they carved out the hole in the ozone layer. They're really nasty. They're an amazing greenhouse effect, which if you live on the Earth is a bad thing, but if you live on Mars is a good thing. So maybe we can build specially designed like pollution factories on Mars that just spit out chlorofluorocarbon CFCs nonstop to boost up the atmosphere, to get, uh, to accelerate some sort of warming trend. But... That plan only really works well if you already have an atmosphere in the first place. You need a lot of air pressure, and then you can add the chlorofluorocarbons, add the CFCs, and that tra uh, traps additional heat, but it really only works best once you have a substantial atmosphere. So we need a lot of air. Carbon dioxide isn't going to do the trick because there isn't enough of it on Mars, but then we look at Earth. What is our atmosphere? Our atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. Where is nitrogen in the solar system? It's in the outer solar system. If you go to like some comet, you know, some random deep space comet, it's mostly made of ammonia, or there's at least a lot of ammonia and water ice is in there. And if you drag that comet in and then slam it into Mars, all that water vapor, all that ammonia gets released into the atmosphere because, you know, big giant explosion. The ammonia itself is a great greenhouse gas, so it will contribute to the warming of Mars. And then, as ultraviolet radiation from the sun hits the ammonia, it disassociates and becomes nitrogen. Nitrogen is released, so it leaves behind this nitrogen. So maybe a combination of a bunch of comets slamming into Mars with CFC factories can do the trick of boosting the Martian atmosphere. But you're going to have to deal with a major issue, and that's the lack of its magnetic field. You got to rebuild its magnetic field if you want to protect this atmosphere. You know, like if without the magnetic field, you know, every molecule of carbon dioxide that you put up there is just going to get blown away by the solar wind. And then like, what's the point? 
So to do this, to do this, you need to protect Mars and you need to protect its atmosphere as you're building it. So we need a magnetic field. Two proposals that I've come across that I think are pretty wild. One proposal is to run a giant superconductor all the way around the equator of Mars and use that to generate a very strong magnetic field. You just run a current through that giant superconductor and you need a superconducting so that uh, it can be nice and nice and cold with very, very little resistance. And this way it doesn't just melt as soon as you turn it on. And so it can generate this massive current running around the equator of Mars and then that will generate a magnetic field that will protect the atmosphere. Another way is to put a electromagnet, a, 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 I know I'm showing you with my hands, but it's actually very, very large, a large electromagnetic at the Lagrange point between the sun and the and Mars so that it generates its own magnetic field. And it's like a magnetic shield sitting out there in space. And then any solar wind particles simply get deflected and go around Mars without touching it. So this is what you need to do in order to protect the Martian atmosphere. Is this possible? Well, yeah. I mean, there's no like law of physics preventing us from dragging comets in from the outer solar system or, or running a, a, a superconducting wire around the equator or having factories that pump out CFCs. Like that's all, that's all possible. But the real question we're interested in, is it feasible? Can we actually do it? And this is where we run into a lot of challenges. Like if you want to bring in comets from the outer solar system, that sounds easy. But at our current technology, the best we can do is send like a small spacecraft out to maybe orbit a planet or to just escape from the solar system altogether. And then that's it. We can't bring stuff back, especially big things like a comet. As for the CFCs, that takes energy, that takes resources. You're gonna need like nuclear power plants on Mars operating 24 seven or 25 seven because you know, Mars day. It's a Mars joke, Never mind. Uh, you're gonna need these things running all the time. And we currently, we have like zero nuclear reactors on Mars or the moon or anywhere in space. You know, like, like we're, we, we don't have that technology base. If you want a, a superconductor or like if you want like the big mirror to shine onto the Southern Pole, well, you need like a, say a lot of aluminum for that. You know, like, I don't know, like 200,000 tons of aluminum. Where are you gonna get that? You're certainly not gonna launch it off the earth. We don't have 200,000 tons of aluminum to spare. You need to mine it in the asteroid belt and then bring it to Mars. And, and I haven't even gotten started on the whole discussion about oxygen, right? Oxygen is, uh, it's one thing to have an atmosphere, and if the atmosphere of Mars was like six to 10 times more than it currently is, you could walk around without a, uh, a vacuum, without a pressure suit, without a space suit, and that'd be kind of cool. But you would still need an oxygen mask. You would still need to breathe oxygen. Getting oxygen on Mars is going to be a very, very long process. We can't just bring it in. We either need to manufacture it or figure out how to get a bunch of plants going on there. But again, it's not impossible. So I'm not going to sit here and say, like, we'll never terraform Mars. But I am going to say it's going to require much more energy, much more resources, and much more time than you might naively think. It's one thing to say, oh, we'll just bring in some asteroid or some comets, and then we're going to do the superconducting wire, and then look, terraform Mars. No, this is a centuries long process. It's going to take centuries before we can even start the process. It's going to take centuries to finish. And then the Mars that we get, minor might not be worth it. Like it might be slightly less miserable, slightly warmer, slightly wetter. You still need an oxygen mask to go outside, but like, okay, I guess that's better. And maybe in like 2000 years, we can walk freely on the surface of Mars, which if that's your dream, more power to you. But as for me, I'm not holding my breath. It's another Mars joke. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to keep these videos coming and like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week.